Would you give us one half hour of your time if we can show you how to make tens of thousands of dollars? Yes, that's tens of thousands of dollars. Of course you would. So be patient and enjoy the show. Great moments in history. The Towering Inferno. In 1974, civilization culminated into its finest shining pinnacle, producing the greatest of disaster films, The Towering Inferno. By virtue of his genius and dedication, producer Erwin Allen created an ode to our modern times of the scope and complexity of James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. Everyone or everything in our civilization can some way, shape, or form be associated with the Towering Inferno. Take Alice the Maid in The Brady Bunch. Alice worked with Bobby Brady, who was played by Mike Lookinland, who played the smoke-inhaling boy in The Towering Inferno. Or Clint Eastwood. In Unforgiven, Clint Eastwood worked with Gene Hackman, who played the preacher in The Poseidon Adventure, which was produced by Erwin Allen, who produced The Towering Inferno or your third grade math teacher, Mrs. Majak. She had a torrid affair during the 60s with Steve McQueen during her Haight-Ashbury days, and she used to call Steve McQueen the Towering Inferno. The state of Idaho. Idaho is where they filmed The River Wild with Meryl Streep, who played the burning fireman in The Towering Inferno. Or Genghis Khan. He was reincarnated over 500 years after his death and became party girl number two in The Towering Inferno. The Panama Canal, a source of international tension during the 70s. Richard Chamberlain, a source of international tension during the 70s when he made The Towering Inferno. the Bible, there's a passage I got memorized, seems appropriate for this occasion. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who, in the name of charity and goodwill, shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and a finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. That's a pretty bold statement.
And now, right here, who will be our first contestant right here in the Jackrabbit Slim Fishing Contest? Over here. I'm not much of a fish. I believe that my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. Now I want a fish. I want to win. I want that trophy. So fish good. <laughs> Robert Carlton has lived a life that reads like the stuff of fiction. A life that has seen firsthand many of the most compelling events of the 20th century. In his autobiography, Eyewitness to History, Carlton recounts those extraordinary events and his extraordinary life. Spending most of his time now gardening and stamp collecting, Robert Carlton talks with us about his part in history. Mao Tse Tung, saint or devil? Even now, it is difficult to know which is the correct description. Mao and I were like brothers, and like a brother, I both loved and hated him. To tell you about him is to tell you about me. I was not always a political animal. The carefree ways of youth, they were my ways. Fishing, girls, eating soup. Then one day, the government troops came into my village. They rounded up the elders made them each eat a box of instant mashed potatoes. They then made the elders drink hot boiling water till, one by one, they exploded. Even to this day in China, you cannot buy a box of instant mashed potatoes. The Chinese call them fiang chang flao, flakes of death. I joined Mao and his army of liberation. Mao Tse Tsung, a puzzle within an enigma, within a riddle, within a shoebox, within an egg salad sandwich, within a puzzle. Sometimes I forget that second puzzle. Did you know that he was short, barely two feet tall, and in constant pain owing to a splinter in his big right toe? Why didn't he have the splinter taken out? <laughs> I asked Mao that very question one day, and he said to me, in that way that he had, Chong Pao, which is Chinese for freckles. That was his nickname for me. He said, Chung Pao, what is a splinter in my big right toe when my countrymen's bellies are exploding from too much instant mashed potatoes? I had no answer for him. But you don't have any freckles. I know. Mao, an extraordinary man. He loved to wear clam diggers. Few people know that about him. He'd be making a speech and he'd be wearing those clothes that came to be known as the Mao look, and underneath, he'd have long clam diggers. We started on the now famous Long March, and we had gotten about 200 miles when Mao realized that he'd forgotten to pack any of his clam diggers. So he made us turn around and walk back so he could get them. That's what really made it the Long March. Chiang Kai-shek, on the other hand, culottes culottes and a big fur hat that those soldiers at Buckingham Palace wear? Chang was a fool. Did you know that Mao isn't even Chinese? Remarkable, isn't it? He's Irish. What an incredible mimic. It is one of the great tragedies of history how the revolution was corrupted. Mao began to change. He began to think he was a god, immortal, infallible. The change was gradual. But by the time I broke with him, well, it got to the point where he'd return a tape to a video store. He wouldn't even bother to rewind the tape. He'd say to me, Freckles, rewinding a tape is for the rabble, the masses, not for one such as I. Then he'd laugh a cruel, heartless laugh. <laughs> I have not spoken to the man in more than 20 years. But I thought Al was dead. Listen, my young pup, do not presume to tell me who is dead or who is not dead. I was telling people who was dead before you were ever born. If Mao were dead, his wife Aretha would have written to me, or his son Vinny, let me tell you. So, make no mistake, Mao Tse-Tsung is very much alive. What do you know of life, of death? I am sorry, forgive me. 
I, I grow older. Let me tell you what Charles de Gaulle told me of growing older. We were playing together on the Harlem Globetrotters. We had the day off, and we found ourselves in an arcade. We were playing a game of skee-ball. No, I think it was a game of Mortal Kombat 2. Yes, I have a pog autographed by de Gaulle. Let me see if I can find it. It's, it's here somewhere. Next week, Richard Carlton recounts his friendship with Charles de Gaulle. If I told you that my brother Frank would sell in a new 96 El Griot Coupe for under factory invoice, you'd say that was quite a bargain. If I said my brother Frank would sell you the four-wheel drive mustard machine for less than the price of any other car on the marketplace, you would take home a few. And if I said that my brother Frank would give you a brand new, fully stocked 96 TT convertible complete with air, power windows, power brakes, driver and passenger airbags, CD stereo, and vanilla aroma air fresheners for common household items, you might call my brother Frank strange. <laughs> and you'd be right. But not only is he strange, he is brain damaged. <laughs> Come on down to brain damaged Frank's, because right now he is selling that 96 El Griot Coupe for a pretty bouquet and a bottle of Yoo-Hoo. Yoo until we run out, you can drive home in a mustard machine for a spatula and a plastic blue wiffle bat. And if you're one of the first 20 customers to rush down to Brain Damage Frank's, Frank may give you $5 to drive home in that new Tati convertible. Rush, and I mean rush on down to Strain Frank's while these bargains last. You won't want to miss it, unless you need a new TV. Because to anyone who misses out on these outrageous automobile prices, Frank will give away a TV watcher, 29 inch color television, complete with mini satellite dish, absolutely free. God bless brain damaged Frank. <coughs> Rain damage, Frank. Close. Hi, honey. Kill anyone today? Did I kill anyone? I'm not a doctor. I'm a postal worker. Hi, I'm Mark David Wayne. I've been a postal worker for 20 years. You may have seen some of my blue collar brethren on the evening news. Usually, after the newscaster says, before turning the gun on himself. Those are disgruntled postal workers. I am a gruntled postal worker, which means that even though I am a loner and keep to myself, the way I alleviate job-related stress does not endanger human life. Right, Betty? That's right, Schnookums. How, do you ask? Have I managed to work in an office for 20 years with no windows, no air conditioning, limited human contact, no hope for a future, and still suppress my need to hunt humans for sport? How do I suppress that all-encompassing urge? Many ways. Interpretive dance, nude figure drawing, writing letters to my shoes, and the forgotten art of hamster pedicure. See my wife, Betty? I met her in an isolation chamber. Isn't that right, Wilma? That's right, Pooh Bear. Yes, the post office is your friend. I am a gruntled postal worker, which means the voices inside my head are no different than yours and mine. And to all my disgruntled brothers out there, stop. Before you leave that note for the cops to find, go back and talk to the mirror for some more. You'll find that it's just not worth it. So remember the zip code, and as always, have a nice day. Roseanne, it's time for America's Most Wanted. I thought I saw one of my co-workers on there.
all around me. Death. Maggots suck at his flesh. Pain is my constant friend. The Velcro clown pukes. All right. Hi, um, I'm from out of town. I live upstate in Schuylkill County, and I'm here visiting a friend. And I wrote this poem, and I read it to them. They said it was real good, and I should read it here tonight. <clears throat> this poem is about when I went out with my friend Mary Jo on Friday night. Last Friday night, I decided to go out with my best friend, Mary Jo. I call her at work and say, let's do something fun. She says, pick me up at the mall around 10 when I'm done. My husband, Danny, works third shift, so I have to bring my kids up to my mom's house for the evening. Then I go to my sister's, Anne Marie's, to use the curling iron that she borrowed from me. When I get to her house, Anne Marie's on the phone, but she tells me to get a beer from the fridge and I get myself one. When I'm done curling my hair, I ask Anne Marie if she wants to go out with us. She says she's going to rumors with Evelyn Domalakis. So I drive up the mall to get Mary Jo at work. She's talking outside Fashion Bug with her boss, Kathy Burke. Mary Jo gets in the car and she is really pissed off because Kathy's giving her a hard time about taking next Saturday off. So I say to her, where do you want to go? And she says she's supposed to go to her cousin's wedding in Chendo. And I say, I know about your cousin's wedding. I mean, where do you want to go tonight? And she laughs and says, I thought you meant where am I going on Saturday? And I say, I know. So she says, let's go to the Black Diamond tonight. I think there's lazy, laser karaoke. So I say, all right. So we walk into Black Diamond, and who do we see but Patsy Babinchuk and Jeannie Konashevsky. They have a table right up near the DJ. Patsy gets on my nerves, but we sit with them anyway. <clears throat> we buy a picture of Yingling and three pictures of kamikazes. And then me, Mary Jo, and Jeannie get up and sing Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. We're all having a good time, even Patsy and me. Then who walks in but Joe Shinkus and Frank Swarzynski. Frank's with his new girlfriend, Lorraine, so Patsy starts to cry. And she says she's going to punch her in the face if she tries to say hi. So Jeannie says, let's leave and go for a ride. But Patsy gets sick and starts puking outside. So me and Mary Jo say, we're going to go get something to eat. So we drive down in Gerardville for Screamers and Pete's. After we eat, it's about quarter to two, we decide to call it a night. So we do. I drive Mary Jo to her house, and we say good night. She says, call you tomorrow? And I say, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Are you tired of the same old exercise equipment that just won't stand up to all of your clothing? Now there's Nordic Rack. Nordic Rack. It's easy to assemble and oh so easy to use. Nordic Rack holds sports jackets, suit jackets, even dinner jackets. Finally, a place to hang your hat. Not to mention shirts, socks, ties, and shoes, shoes, shoes. Plus, Nordic Rack comes with this versatile attachment. Use it as a pants valet, a phone information center, or a handy snack caddy. Mmm, mmm, delicious. And it makes a great gift for the holidays. Nordic Rack, you be the judge. You can either have this or this. Call this toll-free number today and have Nordic Rack in your home tomorrow. So there I was, yes. lying nude on the beach in Rio, Ooh. when this really beefy burrito of a guy comes up to me Ooh. and sticks his tongue, <gasps> get this, right between my... Oh, yes, <gasps> yes. You know, I just have the strangest feeling that we're being watched. Sorry, girls. DQD's back on. Hi. Hi. 
You know, I was born on February 29th, and even though I've been alive since 1968, I'm only six years old. Hi! Tell me, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around to hear it, does it make a sound? Wait, uh, tell me, uh, why do we park on driveways and drive on parkways? Shut down again, eh? Yeah. yeah, I can't think what's going wrong. It's your paradoxes. They're old, they're used, they're inappropriate for the situation. I know, but I can't afford anything else. How can I do better on my salary? Have you tried Xenos? Xenos? Sure. Xenos has paradoxes for every occasion. And they're very reasonable. Here's their card. Xenos, huh? I'll give it a try. What have I got to lose? Hi. Hi. Tell me, why is it always the strongest men who hurt the most inside? I think we'll be going now. Here. Keep the change. Having better luck now, eh, Al? Thanks to you. And Xenos. Thomas? Uh, yes, it is. Mr. Thomas, this is Debbie calling from AT&T. According to our records, you switched your long-distance service to MCI. I'm calling to see if you would like to switch back to AT&T. Well, I'm satisfied with MCI in any way. I really don't make that many long-distance phone calls. Did you know that AT&T long-distance rates are actually very competitive with MCI? Plus, of course, you get that AT&T quality and service. I think I'll stick with the company I have, you know, for now anyway. We can switch you back at no cost to you. And not only that, if you switch back now, we'll give you your first month's long distance calls absolutely free. Absolutely free? Gee, is that anything like relatively free? No, I mean, it sounds like a good offer, but like I said, it really doesn't matter one way or the other which uh, company I'm using. We'll do I mean. your laundry for a year. Excuse me? We'll do your laundry free for one year. Shirts, underwear, you name it. We'll even match your socks for you. Fluff and fold, Mr. Thomas. That's our motto here at AT&T. Uh, thanks, but like I said, I Kathy really... Wilkins! What's Kathy Wilkins have to do with this? You'd like a day with her, right? Well, switch back to us, and it'll happen, Mr. Thomas. We'll even put it in writing. I'm a woman, Mr. Thomas. I talk to other women. Do you know what we want? How we think? How we feel? Our innermost thoughts? What turns us on? Mr. Thomas, women want a man with strength. A man who isn't afraid to be gentle and tender. A man, Mr. Thomas, who isn't afraid to switch his long distance service. Look, this is getting just a little bit ridiculous. I mean, this... My mother needs an operation, really. I'm her only means of support. If I lose this job, I don't know what I'll do or what will happen to mom. Look, lady, I just... I just don't appreciate any of this nonsense. Oh, this is you a... don't appreciate? You don't appreciate? You smug little bastard. Mr. God's gift to long distance phone calls. Do you think Susan Morris would appreciate your telling all your friends how you, now how did you so charmingly phrase it? Nailed her. We both know what really happened, don't we, Phil, babe? Does the phrase, this never happened to me before, sound familiar? It should, since according to our records, you've had occasion to say that, uh... Oh, oh, let's just say 15 times and leave it at that. I mean, 
There's no need to get personal, is there, Phil? Uh, you said the first month is free? Was free, Phil. Was free. But that was before you got just a little too snotty with me. But I think we understand each other a bit better now, don't we? I think so. Now, as I was saying, upon switching back to AT&T, you will be billed the nominal fee of $25. Is this understood, Mr. Thomas? Yes, ma'am. As to future expenses, we'll just play it by ear and see what we come up with. Bye-bye, and thank you for switching back to AT&T. The moment you have all been waiting for. How to make tens of thousands of dollars. Yes, that's tens of thousands of dollars. To make tens of thousands of dollars, you simply... A smile turns into a laugh, which turns into a love. So with all of our hearts, we must share the gift of laughter.